Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In this film I want to highlight the factors around using MOGAS or motor gasoline in gyroplanes. The recent fatality actually has made me think about this element and because I'm not sure how well the current knowledge has been propagated in some parts of the world there are links to some definitive reading material in the description. Sadly there isn't a huge amount of interest in film around this title but I think the information is worthwhile. The Spitfire Low Pass just because it looked great and watch to the end and I'll replay it with pure sound. Most of the newer two-seat gyroplanes marketed globally are powered by the popular Rotax 9 series motor at being 912, 914 and now 915 variants. These motors don't cope very well with the high lead content in 100 LL Avgas and so lead-free UL91 Avgas or unleaded MOGAS are technically better alternatives. Switching to MOGAS also provided a worthwhile cost saving and convenience, particularly for owners based at strips without on-site refuelling facilities. All was well until fuel companies started to introduce ethanol into MOGAS, where in the UK 5% may be typical in EN228 specification fuel. That is not universally global with many South American and indeed the USA having motor gasoline with far higher biofuel content. MOGAS containing alcohol is a concern because the fuel might damage the rubber and plastic components of the fuel system and also cause problems through its propensity to absorb water which can suddenly come out of solution later, stopping the engine in flight. In more concentrated solution, ethanol can also cause problems with corrosion of components in the fuel system. The devil of the detail can get complex, hence the reading material links in the description. But in the UK, the use of MOGAS in gyroplane is limited to the following condition. Only if the engine is specifically approved for MOGAS, fuel should be fresh, clean, water-free and not exceeding 5% alcohol content, you must verify full takeoff power prior to committing to takeoff, the fuel tank temperature must not exceed 20 degrees centigrade and you should fly below 6,000 feet. There's also additional warning that carb icing, water contamination and vapour lock are more likely. Final caution. One consequence of coronavirus is everyone's been driving less and therefore the turnover of fuel at the pump has been much lower. I would advise using UL91 if it's available or even 100 LL Avgas in the short term until activities return to normal and fuel at the usual fuel pump is likely to be fresh. Now, pure sounds and the Spitfire. Fly safely.